Well, let's talk elections, shall we, here on South Africa tonight. Not our elections, of course, those were just a short while ago. Uh, it's the U.S. midterm elections taking place uh, this year. In case you've woken up with a bit of a hangover, I'm talking about 2022. Uh, 34 Senate seats and all 435 seats in the House are up for election on the 8th of November. So what does this mean? Uh, always good to have uh, John Stremlau, Honorary Professor of International Relations at the Wits University, joining us. Hello to you, John. All the best to you and yours. Uh, for the year ahead. So could we see potentially Trump back in the White House? Help me understand uh, what the ramifications are for these midterms. Well, well, Gareth, thank you very much. It is a big year for elections, not just in, uh, in the United States, but of course the ANC Party Congress is in 2022. And both uh, of our two countries have uh, national elections in 2024. But Trump, if he is, is, is a candidate, won't be a candidate until the 2024 election. On the other hand, the congressional election could go for the Republicans, which would tie Joe Biden's hand and would be uh, another reason for alienation among lots of voters, because uh, both in South Africa and in the United States, voting publics don't like their governments very much. Mm. So how uh, do you uh, expect this to play out then? I'll tell you why I'm asking the question, John, because ever since uh, Joe Biden came into uh, the White House, there's a lot less international coverage, respectfully, of what uh, the U.S. president is doing, I think just because of the way Donald Trump handled his administration. So how much of a threat uh, is the leadership of Joe Biden going to face later this year? Just give me a sense of the, the temperature of the United States. It, it's a very good question. Um, it's, a, it's a very good question, and there are parallels to South Africa, because certainly, uh, as I alluded to, there, there is an unhappiness on the broad electorate over the, uh, the current administrations. On the other hand, uh, no one wants to go back here to a Jacob Zuma administration. No one wants to really go back to a Donald Trump administration, although there are hardcore, there is, there's a state capture process underway. Mm. And for South Africans to follow the U.S., it's important to bear in mind that, that, one, it's a very polarized country. Two, that Joe Biden's lead in, 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 in 2020 was very, very narrow in the Electoral College. It's a very antiquated constitution. It's not as progressive as South Africa's. And once again, the Republicans are pushing a full court press to try to gerrymander congressional districts to try to suppress voters. And there's a big question as to whether Joe Biden has enough political strength in the coming uh, weeks and months to, to pass some voting rights reform, electoral reform, because it is not a country that is favorable to one person, one vote. You know, The Economist had a 2022 forecast of the biggest issues, and autocracies versus democracies was number one. And then The Economist editorialized that it, it, it certainly was not a good advertisement for democracy to have the United States being as much of a mess as it is. And that mess is likely to be clarified only insofar as the Republicans are likely to take control of the uh, Congress, which means more, even greater paralysis than, uh, than currently is the case with uh, such a narrow div division in the Senate and a, a very narrow division in the House. And I imagine, uh, Professor, as I begin to say goodbye to you, last question uh, is the difference between... Uh, South Africa and the U.S. is it's very clearly divisive. You've got the Republicans, the Democrats, uh, and, and perhaps the independents on that. Here, we, of course, have our multi-party electoral system. So it's not as easy to ascertain uh, just how different our politics are. It seems, from what you're suggesting as well, tell me if I've misinterpreted what you're saying, that the real fight is going to be within the ANC and the ANC elective conference itself. Well, you know, you raise a very profound question, and I'll be very brief, but that proportional representation here is really the future, I think, of democracies. First past the post gives, gives too much power to the extremes that operate in primaries in the U.S., and it polarizes the country even worse. If we had a proportional representation, if we had coalition politics like we have in South Africa, which are growing and growing importance, as Cyril Ramaphosa predicted it would, and that's probably healthy for democracy, Gareth. Well, uh, Professor, it's always a pleasure to have you on ENC. There's a lot to talk about politically, of course. That was just a, a highline version of what we can expect from uh, Prof. John Stremlau throughout the year. going to be a big year for local politics and, of course, what happens in the state. University of the Witwatersrand's uh, honorary professor, uh, John Stremlau. I love talking to John. I'm sure we're going to speak to him again uh, in the coming months.